Welcome back to the Manor Entropians, Julian McBain here, and as you can see, I'm still on the hunt for Chapter 1. Although, since I was gone for the weekend, I really haven't made a whole lot of practice. I haven't played since I got back. Probably should toss out my uh, Leprechaun here. There we go. It's good training for him, too. I don't know how long this video is going to be. My throat's a bit scratchy after the weekend. I don't know if it's the Burka Plague, which is the SCA's version of the Con Crud, or if it's because of allergies and post-nasal. I did get quite... I won't say I was super dehydrated, but I didn't have enough water while I was fighting over the weekend. So basically I'm dehydrated, mildly dehydrated. So, I've been guzzling water all day. But if I cut this one short, that's why. I don't know how long my throat's going to hold out. I've been on the phone all day because that's my job. We're just going to see what happens. One of the things that really keyed me in this weekend as I was fighting <coughs> is being able to overcome a sense of resentment over things I don't necessarily have a control over and especially toward people who may not themselves have much control over it or even know about it uh, in the SCA is a large organization consisting of probably some 50,000 individuals. I know that our, our official numbers are 30,000, but I believe it's 30,000 paid members, and we allow a whole bunch of unpaid. I mean, you don't have to be paid, you don't have to pay to play. So if we were to tally up everyone who considers himself a quote-unquote Skadian, then 50,000 is not out of the realm of possibility. Well, whenever you get that many people in an organization, they don't always get along. You get end up with subgroups and divisions, uh, chapters, things of that nature. Which, you know, we, we have them across two different types. You've got shires, which are local political divisions that are supposed to mimic, sh you know, real-life shires in the Middle Ages. What would, you know, eventually become counties in the United States. And they are larger equivalents, such as baronies and the like. But you also have more, less geographically locked groups called households. And households sometimes don't get along. And then you have orders. And sometimes orders and households don't get along. And so, and orders are basically awards. It's complicated. But either way, needless to say, Due to internal politics, I have been trying to overcome an issue with internal politics, and I think I made a lot of inroads over the weekend, and I think that's very good. And it made me think about, because I've been carrying a lot of resentment over the issue that involves this, I'm being del very deliberately vague. Uh, one, because I don't want to come off as whiny. Not that I do a terribly good job of that, but... I can make the attempt, but more importantly, because the, the 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 details don't really matter, you know. The point is, that 
there is a situation that's that's political in nature, not mo you know mundane politics, nothing to do with U.S. politics or European politics. It's all internal to the organization, and I'm caught on one side of it. And I think I've th this weekend really helped to bridge the gap in that issue better than it had been. And I'm not saying it's been solved. It could be another five years before it's solved. It may never solve. But it was really nice to see a little bit of progress. And it made me realize that I've been carrying this, this bundled anger and resentment inside of me. And I've got to figure out how to overcome it. And one of the things you need to do to overcome it is you need to give yourself a purpose with which to overcome it. A reason for it. Is there a desire? And you have to give yourself a plan to overcome it. And that plan may not be easy and it may not be short. It's probably going to take a lot of time. Especially, you know, especially if the problem's deep-rooted. And it doesn't mean that the situation has to be your fault, and usually it won't be. Now, I've gone into great detail in other videos about the difference between fault and responsibility. You know, just because a situation exists is not my fault. I'm not the one who caused it. I'm, I'm not a member of one group, and I was not a member of the group I am a member of when all of the, the crap happened. But, as a representative of the group that I'm a member of, it is my responsibility to repair what broke. And I think that there was progress made on that front. Even if it was just a little, the tiniest bit is still progress. You know, shit don't happen overnight. Skills don't get better overnight. Relationships don't get fixed overnight. Relationships don't get built overnight. They get built over time. All of these things get built over time. You just have to embrace the grind and, and do the thing that needs to be done. And I'm glad to say that, unlike when I first came here on that particular front, organizationally, I'm not alone. And so that's helpful too. Having help is always useful. Having people that you can rely on is invaluable. Those who are willing to stand up for you, be on your side, help you when you're confused, listen to you when you're upset. Hang on. These things are all important if you are going to succeed at anything in life, but particularly if it involves personalities and old arguments. And sometimes the best way to handle things is head on, and sometimes it most certainly is not. Being able to tactfully judge the situation is important too, and that's not easy. I'm still trying to figure that bit out. You know, how do I best tactfully handle the situation? Part of me wants to make light of it. Not brush the whole thing off as a joke, but try to use humor to address the situation. But not everyone takes kindly to that. And depending on the area you're in, a lot of people don't. If you're in the Northeast, forget it. People love humor, but it's usually snide humor. And when you're trying to build relationships, snide humor does not do the job. Or sarcastic humor. My whole family's built on sarcasm. Most of my friends are... No. No, all of my friends are too. Every last one of them. We're built on sarcasm. But that's not how you build bridges. And unfortunately, bacon and scotch only goes so far. 
It goes quite far. <laughs> but it's not a softball. And so... Figuring out how to bridge that gap. Figuring out how to take that next step. Now that I've seen that a step has been made, even though I didn't know, I didn't know the step was being made. I was just making effort, I was actually making effort in a different, for a totally different reason, and it happened to be that a step was made because it was the, the step on path A happened to also be a step on path B. And now I know that I'm starting to make those steps, even if they're small. And if you think about it, that's pretty much how everything goes in life. You, know, you run into a problem and you have to take steps. And sometimes those steps are small. And you might make a step in the right direction without even realizing because that's not what you were focused on that day. But action in one direction might have an ancillary effect on some other goal. Or it might have a direct solid effect on the other goal because they're aligned with each other, but you didn't see how they were aligned when you started. So many things in life are intertwined. And usually we don't see what those things are until they're slapping us in the face. Well, I'm a fencer, so for me, usually they're stabbing me in the face. Like my students. But one of the things as an example of, of things intertwining with each other you know, I teach, I have two students and I teach fencing. I teach a specific style of fencing. But I also mentor to the extent that I can. And in doing so, I learn. By helping others become better, I hate to use the term better people, because that's, that's not accurate. By helping others find their genius, I learn more about my own. Because everyone has something they're good at. Even if they don't realize it. Everyone has their own set of potential. And there's nothing I love more than seeing potential unlocked. Look, dude, I don't want to make a Shoggoth a disciple, okay? Never in a million years. And, and it's not even its not even any form of prejudice. They don't have the brains to do anything other than eat. They are literal abomination blobs. I don't even think they have brains. Now, if you want to talk about the cultists, we can talk. I have nothing against Dilithids. You know, other than the fact that they want to eat your brain, but... I mean, we all have what we need to eat. I can... I can at least understand their need. It's a natural instinct. But I don't even think these are true animals. I once said, life is a series of traumas. To this day, I still think that description is accurate. Or I should say, 
it's correct, but not necessarily precise. Yes, it's it's imprecise, not inaccurate. Life is a series of challenges. Many challenges will lead to trauma traumatic experience. The trauma you experience shapes your worldview. I think that's a more precise method of looking at things. And far less pessimistic than the heretofore mentioned tra uh, tragedy of existence. Because there are many tragic things in life. But that doesn't mean existence itself is a tragedy. That's... Well, frankly speaking, that's borderline nihilism. It's incumbent upon each of us to face the challenges of our lives with grace and figure out what we need to do to, to overcome the challenges that are set before us. Damn. Come on, let me under the solar panels. No. It's not gonna let me on the solar panels. Poo. Yes, I know. I'm five, okay? Life is a challenge. One hell of a challenge. I don't even know, man. Maybe that's why I'm a fencer. I mean, I can do the whole, the whole politics thing. I've had to do it. I can do it. And sometimes I even enjoy it. And it, by far, is perhaps the most challenging thing I have to deal with. Because it requires patience, which is not necessarily my strong suit. But I mean, I can grind through this, and I can grind Fortnite, and I can grind any other game. So I can definitely grind real life, but... I think the reason I'm a fighter... Besides the fact that I enjoy the adrenaline rush and I enjoy the challenge and there's just something very visceral about being in combat, even if it's sports combat. Lives aren't on the line, but it doesn't mean you'll come off the field on injury. Because it's straightforward. There's an understanding between you and another combatant, another fighter. And it transcends... It absolutely transcends any immutable fact. Age, race, gender. None of it matters. When you're in the ring, or what we call the Eric, which is ironic because my son's name is Eric, although it's spelled differently. When you're in the Eric and you put the mask on and your sword is in the on guard stance, you cease to be anything else. All other factors are a non-issue. You're both fighters. Or if it's a melee, you're all fighters.
and there's something very pure about it. Because you're there to challenge the strength of the other person and see who is superior. And it might only be superiority for a day. And when you're in a tournament, it's much different than practice. When in practice, you know, you may not be... In practice, you may go into a bat not even trying to win. You're just trying to pull off a move. Or defend a certain number of blows. Or instigate a certain number of blows before dying. In a tournament, there is a need to win. And so at the very, at the very least... Every time you step into the, the fighting ground, ground. It's a battle for recognition of superiority. And you know what? After the bout's over, in most cases you go out you have a meal or a drink and you're laughing hell a lot of the people i fight at the end of the round we hug or at the end of the number however many passes you agree to and i've learned and actually, I really felt it this past weekend. Because I got introduced to someone I had never never met before. We had something to discuss, which, ironically, we never got to discuss. But we got introduced. And then we fought. And I feel that the people that I fight with, I make better connections... Or I should say, I make faster connections with those I cross swords with. I don't know why. It doesn't make sense. Necessarily. Maybe it's the shared experience? Because people who fight alongside each other against odds bind very tightly. But it's very different when you're fighting against that person. And yet... I find there's a certain bond with those I fight against. Win or lose. And I think it's because the type of combat that I do is pure competition. We're not out to hurt each other. Defeat. Yes, but not hurt. And I think that is very interesting. Fighters as a whole are a very tight community. And I mean, between our, our respective disciplines, there's going to be divisions. But for people from the outside, it's, it's like, it's like siblings, right? Siblings pick on each other. They nag on each other, they rag on each other. They're often mean to each other. But boy oh howdy, someone from the outside decides to try to stick their nose in where it don't belong. And it's like, oh hell no. Don't even think about it. Yeah, I may pick on them, but they're my brother or my sister. And I can pick on my siblings, but that doesn't mean you're allowed to. Let's get an up close and personal look at these ugly fuckers. That is disgusting.
Just look at the way... I think those are eyes. I'm pretty sure those are eyes. And just look at the way they move. It's terrible. Move around to the back. Oh, he's spinning. Puking all over me. Bastard. No me time to head back. More eyes up or, or blobs. I like vestibles. Too many mouths. Which, of course, more than one is too many, but still. <laughs> Get into my not a Jeep hierarchy. Not, not an XJ Jeep charity, <coughs> which is pretty much what it looks like—a heavily modified XJ. Holy crap! Oh shit! Cool, the fuel gauge actually works. It even has a health gauge, that's awesome. many shoggoths all right guys we're going to end it here thank you for watching thank you for listening please like share and subscribe down below we are on the road road wow i'm tired we are on the road to 13 million subscribers one subscription at a time so make sure you subscribe as always i appreciate all the su support you all have a wonderful night